Come, Lord Jesus, come to my life. Come, Lord Jesus, come fill my heart. Bring your light to my day. Bring your hope to my night. Come, Lord Jesus, come to my life. Come, Lord Jesus, come to our lives. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Sophie Thompson. I was born in Europe and I came as a small child to the United States and my first recollection of this church was the beautiful statues that I encountered. They were so big. They were bigger than me because I was a little child. Um, the people of this neighborhood were very nice. Uh, it was a very uh, hard transition from European uh, living to the American living, but uh, it was very easy to take. Another thing I remember is there's so many people in this church that you couldn't find a seat, but the ushers would find you a seat someplace in the church, even if it was almost in the back of the church. Um, there were three collections. Uh, the first collection was for a seat, and then the, the other two collections were like there today for the uh, upkeep of the church and whatever it is, the three collections. Uh, well, my father, he only made $25. He only made $25 a week. And of course, we came without my mother because she was ill and she was left behind in Europe. So my father only made $25 a week, or actually, 24.75, and he had to, had to pay for the babysitter that watched us during the week. Um, another thing is, uh, he would give us collection money. He would give us a, a, a dime, a nickel, and pennies. The first collection was the dime for the seat, and the second collection was the nickel, the twenty, uh, the five cents and the third collection were the pennies. Uh, of course, uh, in those days, they were a lot of money. Of course, my father put more. He, it's about a dollar that he would put in the collection of that time. But you could live for uh, $10, $20 with a grocery, uh, with several bags of groceries at that time. I remember going to school in St. Joseph and of course the teachers. Now since I came from Europe, we didn't have much clothes and they were a clothes drive. And one of the teachers noticed that I did not have shoes, very good shoes, nor galoshes. And she would bring the, uh, the uh, shoes and the galoshes behind her desk. And then while all the other children went for lunch, she would call me over and she would place them and see if the shoes and the galoshes would fit on my feet. And of course, I was just, uh, I was just delighted with the presence. And of course, the, the nun was also delighted that I enjoyed the beautiful uh, remembrance and the beautiful things that I didn't have that she would actually present to me. When I was, uh, I would believe I was in this, first grade, but that was only for a couple months in order to learn English or to get used to the other children. And of course, when I was in the first grade, I was so happy because I knew how to count and different things. Of course, I did not know the language nor the, uh, uh, the reading part of it. But the uh, teacher was very nice and she would have assigned an older student or another student from another class to help me out until I was able to uh, get myself uh, acclimated with the other students. Oh, I remember the beautiful celebrations of the church of the processions and especially Holy Thursday. All the 
children would bring flowers and it would always rain, especially uh, from, the, uh, from the side of the school. We would have to come through. So before we came into the church, we got soaked with our little flowers. Now, all the other celebrations we had uh, were in May, May processions. Uh, the children, the sisters would actually make little capes for the boys and of course uh, capes for the girls with little flowers in their hair. Uh, it was so beautiful and it, all the little children like, looked like little angels because they held their hands together and uh, they walked piously through the church and the mothers and fathers would, uh, would actually appreciate uh, or actually would admire them coming through the church. Now, another thing is that I remember when the uh, nine o'clock mass was the children's mass and all these processions generally would start with the last mass, which was uh, the 12 o'clock mass, which was the high mass. And uh, so we would go for the nine o'clock mass with this, <coughs> excuse me, with the uh, sisters and then, of course, for the 12 o'clock mass, for the processions. Now, the sisters would have uh, boxes and boxes of all these different uh, little capes that we would have. The uh, boys would always wear the uh, blue capes. The girls would always wear the light pink capes. And they were satin. Sometimes they were trimmed with feathers, and sometimes they were trimmed with garlands. Uh, but they were just, just gorgeous. And each year, each, uh, each year, the uh, sisters would have different um, children dressed differently. So it, it would start with actually with the second grade, I believe, or yeah, it was second grade, and it would go all the way up to the eighth grade. The old school consisted of four classes. Our classes consisted of 89 students in each class. Now, uh, I remember also in the fourth grade when one of the nuns passed away, we had a ceremony in the um, uh, convent where the nun was actually laid out and she had a pillar, a, a pillow filled with flowers and these were the flowers from one of the processions that we had. I remember Monsignor Strensky. Monsignor Strensky had a very, very bad operation and he could not talk. And because he could not speak very well, so he always had the nine o'clock mass because the students would not, the children would not uh, complain about his sermons. But uh, he made out and uh, it was a very serious operation on his throat. We enjoyed his uh, sermons anyway because he talked in a childish form for us. So we enjoyed it, uh, but the uh, parents of this, the children sometimes did not appreciate it, but this, the children did enjoy it. And from the first pew all the way back to the last pew in the center aisle, that was the children that attended Mass. One time it was in Lent, and I came for another Mass with my, my father. I think it was a 10 o'clock Mass, or maybe it was a 12 o'clock Mass. And the nun says, well, what did you see different in the church? And here the statues were covered in purple. So she said, oh, then you were in church. I don't recall none of the nuns uh, by name, but I do remember their faces. Uh, they were very, very kind women and they, uh, they would help you out. Like I had problems with the uh, grammar, English grammar. I had no problems with the mathematics or the other things, but I did have uh, problems with the uh, grammar. So she would assign people to, uh, or actually students to help you out. Yeah. When we were in classrooms, we sat three in a bench. There were benches and we would sit, the, the shortest ones would sit in the front and of course the tallest ones would be in the back. Like I mentioned earlier, we had a classroom of 80 uh, or 90 students, so we were really packed like little sardines. 
Now our, our coach, we had them in the back of the classroom. And then finally, I believe it was in seventh grade or so, one of the, one of the uh, students' uh, fathers, he was a carpenter, and he built us like a uh, little uh, closets to put our clothes in and our, our uh, books that we did not need for the day. Um, those benches that we sat in, they're very rare and you could see them in all kinds of uh, uh, old pictures. Then, of course, in the eighth grade, we had the new benches, which we sat individually, individually, and those brand, uh, benches, we had our own little compartment, put our own little books in there, and we had our uh, clothes in the hallway. The hallway had consisted of closets that we could put our clothes and our books that we did not need for that particular day. I remember during the breaks, we played hopscotch on Liberty Street. And I also remember the breaks we had during classes and we would be doing exercises. And of course, some of the students had long hands. And when we were doing the exercises, you had to watch out so you don't hit the other students on the other side with your long hands. And now this consisted from, I believe, from about uh, sixth grade, sixth, seventh, and eighth, because prior to that, remember, we sat in three in a, in a, three in a seat. So we could not have any breaks at that time. I also remember having the beautiful uh, plays from Monsignor Strensky's feast day, and uh, we would be all uh, taught by the nuns different uh, dances and different things, and the one I remember the most is being in a beautiful blue gown, and we were making uh, dancing uh, two, or, no, four, four girls and one in a little circle. It was beautiful, and of course, my mother had to make the dress for us because uh, each, each of the girls had their, the same type of dress. It was just gorgeous. I am the only one that is left over here in Camden as a, well, not the only one. There's about four of us that are still living in Camden from that period of time. Uh, I enjoyed living in Camden, although a lot of things have changed. But the church hasn't changed, the people haven't changed, and the uh, priest and the, uh, the clergy of this parish, they love the parish, and I also love the parish. Now all the other students that I have gone to school, school with, uh, some of them have passed away. I'm still alive, <laughs> and I'm still kicking, and I still come to church almost every Sunday. Sometimes I can't because I have a little difficulties walking. But other than that, uh, I still come to church and I'm happy to be here. And I love this parish and I hope to die in this, in this parish and be buried in St. Joe's Cemetery. Jesus Christ. 
Christ in your love in the storm of my life safe and warm stretch your hands out to me please extend me your peace now I know that you are what I need keep us Jesus Christ in your love in the storm of our lives safe and warm Stretch your hands out.